According to some of the biggest tech companies in the world, VR will change the way that we work, the way we hang out with people, and of course, how we game. And I don't know about you, but I've always wondered how a VR game is made. And if it's possible for an absolute potato with zero game development experience to make a VR game in 24 hours. I'm talking someone who's never animated, built, or coded a video game in their life. I mean, how hard could it be? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Okay, 24 hours has begun. I'm not freaking out, you're freaking out. I'm totally fine, I'm totally fine. So from my three seconds of VR game development research, I have discovered that it is quite complex. <laughs> so my plan is to use the Unity game engine because it seems to have the most support in tutorials. And I'm gonna need as much help as I can get. I'm not kidding when I say I have no idea how to make a game. I have no idea how to code. I've never used a 3D software in my life. And because of that, I was under the impression that you could just load up Unity and start building a VR game. Yeah, that's not how that works. CVR development in Unity takes a bunch more setup and knowledge that I do not have. And so I followed this awesome tutorial on how to get it set up, but I feel like this is giving me false hope because that was like a little too easy. <laughs> All I have to do now is build the game to the headset. Wait, wait, wait up. Surely that can't be it. No freaking way. Yep, apparently that's all it takes to build your own VR game. Kind of. Dude, this is crazy. Even just this, even just these building blocks is like enough to get started. Are you freaking telling me I can make my own VR game? What? That is the craziest crap. Okay, 24 hours. What am I actually gonna make? Before I have an absolute meltdown, I think it's time for a cheeky game plan. Cue the dramatic music. The first and most important step is to concept a game. I'm thinking something simple and sweet. Dang, this dramatic music's good. Are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. Then we'll get to game development. I'm talking building, shading, animating, you know, the normal things people do when they make games, I guess. And of course, the one I'm most concerned about, coding. Whether I can pull off the coding will determine if it's possible to do this in 24 hours. And if by some miracle I do, I will then put it to the ultimate test. My wife's honest and brutal scrutiny. See, I'm on a mission to show my wife Chelsea the power of virtual reality. But so far, nothing I've done has really impressed her. I mean, to be fair, it's only really been Minecraft related content. So let's see if I can build a VR game that will finally blow her mind. Time to work out what the heck we're actually gonna make. I always like to start with some inspo. I guess we should start with games. I'm inspired by Portal, Minecraft, go figure. East Shade, have you guys heard of that game, East Shade? Okay, so what are the mechanics from those games that I like? Look at me, I'm using gaming terms. I've never made a friggin' video game in my life. It's a creative puzzle game set in a beautiful environment. You know what's also really helpful? Thinking of a name. What if the game was called Tramonto, which means sunset in Italian? It could literally be set in like Tuscany in Italy. Which is strategically Chelsea's favorite country. Tramonto. Haha, <laughs> Tramonto. Because I love the portal technology part of things, right? So what if your controllers, let's just steal the idea, like grab hands. And what if in front of you, there was like these balls of particles falling and you had to catch it and throw it, depending on the color of the ball. You know, like, I don't know, remember Tap Tap Revenge? Do you guys remember that game on the iPod where, like maybe it's more of that kind of game? That's pretty cool. So with an above average game concept and naive confidence, let's build this thing. I could be wrong, but I feel like the best place to start a VR game is the environment. Wait, how the heck do you build a game environment? Luckily for me, there are assets everywhere on the internet. Uh, so I don't really need to build anything from scratch. And that's kind of my goal. Let's see if we can find something related to Italy. There are thousands of assets on the Unity store, but anything related to Italy is pretty hard to come by. Tuscany Seaside? Oh, wait a second. Okay, okay, not necessarily the thing I'm looking for. Uh, what if I try Italy? Italian Street, that's also pretty cool. Yeah, that's not the vibe I'm looking for. <laughs> now I can't go too crazy because I need to make sure that everything can load on the Quest 3. It's essentially a mobile phone strapped to your face. Ah. Uh... Yeah, it wasn't looking great for an Italian environment. But I have been able to find this like low polygon environment that I think is the safest way to go. So I spent the next hour learning how to add and place objects in Unity, which is a very simple thing to do. I just literally have no idea how to use Unity. But tree after tree, I started to get the hang of it. Man, I never knew planting digital trees would be so therapeutic and fulfilling. Should I go outside more? To complement the trees, I added some grass. Yes, that's so sick. I was on such a roll that I even added this awesome sky that really started to bring everything together. I feel like a full 3D artist right now. Look at me go. I'm building a video game, come on. Maybe this whole game development thing isn't that hard after all. Uh, I have no idea what this is gonna look like in VR, but I'm just stoked that I kind of worked out how to make this happen. Let's check it out in the headset. There's nothing here. 
Yeah, I think I celebrated a little too early. For some reason, the game just wouldn't build onto the Quest 3. What have I done, man? So I restarted the Quest a bunch of times, restarted my computer, and even started a new project. And after a few hours of troubleshooting, Unity finally detected the Quest again. Holy dooly. I've spent like the last three hours just troubleshooting weird bugs that I obviously have no idea how to fix. Which I feel like is just part of the game, you know what I mean? Like that's part of being a game dev. I'm a game dev now. No freaking way, dude. Look how good that looks. Ah, okay. We've got a few problems with uh, the height and where I'm standing, but it technically looks like a VR game. Let's go. Okay, so I've got the environment working. Uh, I'm actually pretty impressed. I don't want to toot my own horn here, but uh, if I can do it, you can do it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so a quick reminder about how this game should technically work. The mechanics, if you will. When you load into the game, an item, let's call it an orb, I guess, will be launched at you head on. You'll then need to catch that orb and then throw it towards a goal. This orb will be randomly spawned with different colors. And so you'll have to make sure you throw it into the corresponding goal. Each correct goal that you hit gets one point, and if the orb touches the ground, points reset. Now I know this concept sounds super simple, but I'm trying to give myself the best chance of pulling off an actual functional VR game. So let's start with the orb. So all I've got to do is create a sphere, give it some mass, and let's see what happens. <sighs> ah, I keep forgetting how sick this is. Oh. Ah. That orb is just rolling off into the sunset like the end of a movie. Uh, okay. Okay, so I guess we need a way to interact with the orb, but I have no idea how to make things interactable. So luckily for me, I found another tutorial. <laughs> I followed the video all the way through and imported these prefabs. I think prefab means prefabricated. It's essentially like pre-made assets that you can use in the game. And to be honest, they could be the only reason that I finished this thing in 24 hours. Time is ticking. I better find out if this works. And very luckily for me, it did work. <laughs> yes. Because my whole game is riding on this mechanic. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Now with that working, I kind of want to know what it looks like with the orb fully textured. A gray sphere isn't super interesting to look at. <laughs> so I added a bunch of material textures and shaders to make this orb look a little more alive. I know in my head that I want this thing to look more futuristic. So eventually I settled with this. Some may say simple, I say innovative. <laughs> and hopefully cool enough to impress Chelsea. Oh gosh. If I can get this launching at me and then catching it, uh, I, that's already just like so much further than I thought I would get today. Let's do this. So this is where I think things are gonna really kick off. Sure, I can make something like look pretty good with these assets, but other than that, they're not doing anything. They're not functional. And the only way to make something functional in Unity is with code. The extent of my experience with coding is literally making goofy websites and HTML. Oh, and like six weeks of learning Python in school. But my math was so bad that I gave up. I won't need to know any maths for this, right? So I started off with something simple to code. How can I spawn and launch an object every two seconds? Kind of like a cannonball. Well, I found a video that showed just that. I copied in the suggested code from that video. And the good thing was the orb actually spawned. The bad thing was I had no idea how to give this orb momentum. So I went searching for some other code. And after a few hours of watching videos and slamming code together, I just couldn't get it to work. But this feels like deep end. I haven't felt this deep end with like something in a long time. This really feels like the deep end. So instead of pushing late into the night, I paused the clock, got some rest and dove back in. One, two, three. All right, it is the next day, but I can now spawn things, which is epic. <laughs> and honestly, I still have no idea why it was so hard. It was probably just user error, but the orb was now spawning and flying directly towards my face. But when I built and ran the new version, there was a big problem. It didn't matter how many times I tried, I couldn't grab the orb. I changed a bunch of different settings to see if that would help, but nothing I did worked, which is crazy because this was literally just working. In a last ditch attempt to save the project, I even messed around with the idea of using a paddle to try and hit the ball rather than grabbing it. Kind of like just table tennis. So I'm just making table tennis. But I was swinging my paddle around like a madman and nothing was happening. I don't understand why. Was the paddle not set up correctly? Was the orb not set up correctly? What am I doing wrong? And with time running out, it was starting to get pretty frustrating. What am I doing wrong? I don't know about you, but I don't handle frustration that well, which is kind of ironic because I'm the kind of guy who full sends myself into something I really don't understand for the pure fun of it. Every time I try something new, it's like I forget that the learning curve exists and then I'm right here on the learning curve. And I know if I can get over it, there's something insane on the other side. But man, I can't help but get frustrated when I'm on that curve. And what options do you really have? You either keep pushing through no matter how brutal it is, or you give up on the project completely. You close the door, that's it, it's done. 
Look, to be honest, I don't really know where we go from here. But dang it, I didn't start this to give up on it completely. And so, like my good mate Clay said to me, nothing worthwhile is easy. Are you freaking telling me I can make my own VR game? At the end of that 24 hour countdown, this game may look trash, but it will be a fully functional game. So there could be another option. I could take all the assets and all the things that I've learned from the previous attempt and restart this project completely. I was feeling pretty down before, but I feel pretty good. So let's, uh, game on, man, game on. So I started up a new project from scratch and set everything up for VR just like before. I definitely jumped the gun last time by setting up the environment before I set up the actual game mechanic. So this time I started with the code. I found this dope futuristic cube asset and I worked out how to randomly spawn two different colored cubes. So the player could throw that cube to the matching goal. So I set up two goals on either side of the player. I then double checked that I was able to catch and throw the cube. Things were looking good. I just set up the scoring system so that when I throw a block and it hits one of those goals, we should be able to score. It should come up with the score. Yes. It was freaking <laughs> working. With my limited time, I went back to the Unity Asset Store and found this sick looking environment, but there was no chance it was going to run well in the quest. So I used this smaller demo scene and it looked unreal. With only one hour left, I had some lighting, sound effects, and some simple animation. This has been such a flippin' journey, man. At the start of this challenge, I had no idea what it took to make a VR game. But if a potato like me can do it, so can you. So let's see how my first VR game, Tremonto, turned out. Yo, I forgot how good it looked. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm actually kind of proud of this. Another 24 hours and I think I could actually turn this into a proper VR game. Of course, I can't take credit for the environment and the way things look, but man, am I stoked how this turned out. I don't know why that's so much fun. It just feels so like exciting and rewarding that like I didn't know how to make any video games. There's only one thing left to find out and that's if you agree. But for real, will my goofy VR game live up to Chelsea's standards? Will it finally impress her? She's doing it. Four. You look like every stock footage of someone playing VR. So what's Chelsea's final verdict? It did work. Right? I ask you for your feedback and you're like, it works. <laughs> <laughs>